ಶ್ರೀಯುತಾಪಗತಮಲಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ವೈಷ್ಣವಾಂಶ ಶ್ರೀ ರೂಪ ಸಾಗ್ರ ಜಾತ ಸಹ ಗಣತ ತನ್ ಸಜೀವ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಸಾವಧೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವ ಸಹ ಗಣ ಲಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾನ್ವಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಶ್ರೀಮದೇ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಅಮೆನ್ ಇತಿ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತೆ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ಪಾತಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶಧಾರಿಣೆ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭೋ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶಿವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತ ಬೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಓಂ ತತ್ಸತ್ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ಎವ್ರಿಬಡಿ ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೆಷನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ramayana and understanding something from the beautiful past time of lord ramachandra i am going to a little bit as a precursor from the shrimad bhagavatam in the ninth canto where there is a description of lord ramachandra's past times this will also give us a little peep into the bhagavadam's version of lord ramachandra's past times and also it will also give us an idea of the main basis of why the supreme law is doing this it's a very very famous highly delectable lovable pastime of the supreme lord but i thought i should start that with something to do with bhakti vedant swami shri prabhupada's purpose it was his great desire to if he lived long enough to write a commentary and explain the ramayana in terms of bhakti so we will speak more about it and i like to just read from i'm reading from the ninth canto 10th chapter ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಟು ಸೆವೆನ್ ಯೋಲೋಕವೀರಸಮಿತೃಶತ್ತೋಪನೀತಲೀಲ ಇವೇಕ್ಷು ಯಶ್ಪಿ ಸೀಕೃತ ನೃಪವೃಕ್ಷಯ ಬಭಂಜ ಮಧ್ಯೆ ಜಿತ್ವಾನುಗುಣಶೀಲವಯೋ ಅಂಗೂಪ ಸೀತಾಭಿಧಾಂಶ್ರಿಯಂಸ್ತ್ರೀರಾಜಧೀಚಂಗ್ಲಿಂಗ್ಸ್ಟ್ in the midst of the heroes of this world he broke the bow belonging to lord shiva this bow was so heavy that it was carried by 300 but lord ramachandra bent and strung it and broke it in the middle just as a baby elephant breaks a stick of sugarcane does the lord achieve the hand of mother sita who is equally as endowed with transcendental qualities of form beauty behavior age and nature indeed she was the goddess of fortune who constantly rests on the chest of the law while returning from sita's home after gaining her at the assembly of competitors lord ramachandra met parashurama although parashurama was very proud having rid the earth of the royal order 21 times was defeated by the lord who appeared to be a kshatriya of the royal order then 
यह सत्य पाश प्रवीत पीतुर्देशम चापी सिरसा झग्रे सार्य राज्य श्रिय प्रणयिन सुखदो निभास यौवनम असून इव मुक्त संग कैरिंग आउट दि ऑर्डर ऑफ हिस्स फादर हू वॉज बाउंड बै अ प्रॉमिस टू हिस्स वाइफ लॉर्ड रामचंद्र लेफ्ट बिहाइंड हिस्स किंगडम ऑफलेंस फ्रेंड्स वेल विशर्स रेस्टेंस एंड एवरीथिंग एल्स Just as a liberated soul gives up his life and went to the forest with Sita, Maharaj Dashrata had three wives. One of them, Kai K, served him very pleasingly, and he therefore wanted to give her a benediction. This is from the purport. Kai K, however, said that she would ask for the benediction. At the time of the coronation of Prince Ramachandra, Kai K requested her husband to enthrone her son Bharata. and sent ramachandra to the forest maharaj dasharatha being bound by his promise ordered ramachandra to go to the forest according to the dictation of his beloved and the lord as an obedient son accepted the order immediately he left everything without hesitation just as a liberated soul a great yogi gives up his life without material attraction okay om tat sat thank you so krishna the supreme personality of godhead samam bonam the absolute truth janmadya sayatah anvayat itaratas chartesh abhigya swarat abhigya swarat fully conscious and totally independent that supreme absolute truth is a person he is showing mercy to the living entities of this world in order to teach them reality in order to teach them the truth in order to bring them to reality asatoma satkamaya tamasoma jyotirgamaya asat asat we are situated in non reality or asat but we take this to be the reality we embrace it we are so much involved in it we get so attached to it but it constantly keeps changing we die we are born again we die we are born again in each lifetime we make a quick relationship very deeply with people with things with properties with possessions with our own body with our own a set a mindset and everything together and we disappear again it's broken mercilessly it is cut off and you die but the hankering in you always is to develop a, a relationship a rich relationship an understanding and we are all actually basically it's not enough to just say human beings we are all spirit souls because even if you look at an animal's eye if you look at a dog if you look at a monkey if you look at a cat they are expressing feelings they just don't have that much good facility as a human being has that you can speak a language you can express yourself bodily and many different ways you can show what you feel and what you think and what is your intention animals also do that and if you are along with them for some time you can actually see so basically the spirit soul is always expressing itself seeking a relationship seeking a very meaningful purpose and all that purposes and emotional relationships and everything culminate in the relationship with the supreme personality of god at the absolute truth now we don't understand that so easily and if we say that people are going to say that you are religious you are faith based there is a proof of this everybody our own life is a proof of it in life actually the greatest impetus come for people who are generally more humane than others at least average humanity or humaneness are there is there in them they always seek good living in society in community 
and they want to be able to express themselves and develop relationships and actually hear nice things and this is actually the real juice of life the real juice of life is relationships and this is you go anywhere even in the neutral in the secular world you will see people are saying this some scientists done a huge research for three generations four generations amongst various types of people and they have concluded that the essence of everything is relationship it's a big research uh, so increasingly people talk about that but somehow we can never keep up good relationships in this world some do with a lot of austerity and pain but mostly there is unrequited relationship i'm using a shakespearean term unrequited love love that is expressed but that is not acknowledged a good relationship is acknowledged from both sides with value with purpose with maturity it never works that way very rarely you see somebody having it like that but that is the juice of life and very advanced to human beings actually do that cultured educated mature wisdom laden human beings would like to do that and that's exactly what krishna is offering but we don't see it in the bhagavad gita is saying that man mana bhava madbhakto madhyaji maam namaskuru he is explaining that become my devotee and let's have a relationship in fact i call bhagavad gita a love story because in every chapter krishna is somehow the other speaking about bhakti about relationship with him and about being his devotee and the glory of devotional service because you should understand this even in the absolute realm that is the most important aspect one to one relationship and especially our relationship with god is the most supreme of all relationships so because we don't understand it because we don't know how to take it because we are spiritually immature krishna comes down that is called avatar he comes down under the pretext of killing the demons under the pretext of answering the prayers of devatas and controllers and ishwaras in this world under the pretext of protection of his pure devotee and we have heard all these stories of krishna coming as narsimha krishna coming as vamana krishna coming as name it so many incarnations so he comes to show himself and make us attracted to the absolute but when he comes sometimes in a chosen leela avatar the lord comes in six different types of avatars he comes in yuga avatar every yuga like in this yuga is chaitanya mahaprabhu kali yuga is yuga avatar yuga avatar guna avatar triguna sattva rajas tamas brahma vishnu shiva they are all the guna avataras so yuga avatar guna avatar manvantara avatar in every manvantara the lord appears one mantra one manvantara is one lifetime of one manu is equal to 74 divya yugas so there is manvantara avatar in every manvantara then there is leela avatar the like lord ramachandra he shows his leela which is very attractive then there is purusha avatar that he takes his form as mahavishnu dharbodakshaya vishnu shridodakshaya vishnu like that is called uh, purusha avatar right so in this way there are many different types of six prominently explained here and in that is leela avatar so the supreme lord sometimes descends to perform amazing leela inside human society so when he comes as narsimha you have obviously are in awe of him and you can't go near him. and even lakshmi did not want to go near dr smaran with you when he comes as vamana he is in a completely unique situation doing it for the demigods for the ishwaras and the devatas together so but when he comes as a human being in human society then he makes himself very accessible relatable and relevant that is amazing 
that's Lord Ramachandra. He is appearing as a king in a royal family of the Sun dynasty, Ikshwaku clan. He's appearing there. It's a big race, right? starting from Manu onwards. Right? In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Vivaswan Manave Praha Manu Ikshwakave Apradit. So, Sun God Vivaswan, from there coming Manu, and in that line comes Lord Ramachandra, the Raghu Vamsha. And there is a moon dynasty that is Yadu Vamsha in which Krishna appeared. So, Ikshwaku race. Uh, Lord Ramachandra appeared and he appeared as an ordinary person, one among the human beings. Obviously, when Krishna comes, although he appears in human society, he will be very special. He will be a very special human being. But still, everybody could relate with him, access and make him uh, an object of your relationship. And that Ramachandra appeared. And here in this verse that we read, uh, many, many different things happen. We read some of these leelas that are mentioned. But when he comes as Ramachandra, he fully expresses himself in full. And he relates with everybody. So the amazing thing about Ramayana is the relationships Ramachandra has with Everybody of different type and sorts, right from animals and birds to kings to ordinary human beings to, you know, uh, laity or the ordinary people and to all sorts of people. He has amazing relationships, relationships filled with a lot of exchanges, emotions. That's why Ramayana is very, very attractive to human beings. Why? You are experiencing these things very much in your life, but incompletely. When you hear the story of Ramayana, you can see this is how a human being should be. This is how human society should be in this type of a relationship. Because nothing that does not happen to you is happening there. Everything that happens to you is happening there. And you can relate with it. And you can see the response of Lord Ramachandra and his devotees. And there is emotions involved. There is attachment involved. There is all sorts of other type of uh, feelings of lust, greed, envy, anger amongst the Asuras and Asuric people also involved. And there is many things that come into play. And within that is Krishna as Ramachandra appearing and with his close relatives, his friends, his devotees, and the Ayodhya Vasis, and everybody, you can see a wonderful play of relationships and emotions. That's why Ramana is very, very relevant. And Lord Ramachandra has accepted the role in human society as a king, as a prince, as a son, as a husband, as a brother, you name it, in all these he excels. So Ramanajshari has mentioned that no human being in this world can do it so well, can be so expert and good in all his duties and executions. Therefore, if somebody is so good simultaneously, then he must be the Supreme Lord. Just seeing Lord Ramachandra's beautiful pastimes and how he does everything so nicely, wonderfully. You can understand he's a supreme personality of God. Because none of us are so good at all the different challenging relationships that we have, both in society, within our family, and with our own selves. We are not so good at it. So Ramanacharya concluded that because because uh, that these things are done so nicely. It must be that it is a Supreme Personality of God. So this is something that we point out and try to understand. So here we read a verse. Let me first tell you, I'm not going to speak the whole Ramayana 
from beginning to end obviously this time is not enough i am just taking interesting portions of ramayana where we can get some good lessons today is an introductory session plus i'll just uh, you know go into the particular verse that we have just read about mantara and about kaite and about the boons given this is a precursor to what's going to happen in fact wonderful things happened in lord ramachandra's uh past times in his younger days also who so will try to recollect all these things but i'm not going in a chronological order or i'm not going in the order as per ramayana is written and picking up and taking life lessons from each one of them but of course we'll try to touch as much as possible within the time we have one hour a day so uh here it's mentioned that king dasharath became obliged to keep up a promise that he had given to kaikai let just recollect well, from where i said that the supreme absolute truth appearing in human society when he appears he normally appears with his expansions his energies his devotees and everybody together in chaitanya mahaprabhu's uh, you know incarnation we know the pancha tattva similarly here it is mentioned that the chatur vyuha the vasudeva sankarshana pradyumna aniruddha they are called the chatur vyuha expansions of the law the supreme absolute truth krishna from him comes the first expansion balaram from balaram comes the chatur vyuha from the chatur vyuha sankarshana which is maha sankarshana comes another chatur vyuha and from that chatur vyuha sankarshana comes the three vishnus who penetrate the material world and the material universes so there are four two types of chaturvyuhas so this chaturvyuha uh, descended and vasudeva sankarshana pradyumna niruddha they appeared as ramachandra lakshmana bharata and shatrughna so ramachandra bhagwan he appeared to give pleasure to king maharaj dasharath actually not only three queens it is mentioned here 353 queens he married so many times why because every time parashurama attacked there is one thing that parashurama would do if the king is undergoing a marriage ceremony he will immediately return back he will not attack you there is some sort of a respect for a king who is entering a vivaha yagya so every time dasharath knew that parashurama was super powerful was attacking all the kings and every time he is ready to attack he entered a marriage and it seems parashuram did not attack in this way he said anyway i have to try to get a child and heir to the throne but he was never able to get so he had so many wives not just kaushalya sumitra and kaikai but he never got a child so lord ramachandra appeared out of all the tapasya and everything that he did the putrakamishti yagna and everything that he did that we will discuss towards the last day on ramnavami but prada machandra appeared in his uh, house and he was like completely enamored because for all that he desired a son for so long he got the best of rewards because the supreme absolute truth appeared as his son so for the, all that long waiting and the despair and the constant depression and rejection i don't have a son i don't have a son i don't can't perpetuate my legacy and everything he got the lord himself as his son so the imagine and the lord appeared he was so good so talented so beautiful and handsome looking and everything about him was good so you can imagine dasharath's great happiness and there was no limit to the amount of happiness he had and fortunately king dasharath's happiness was going to be cut off and he would suffer a lot when the instance occurs due to mantra and kaikai's intrigues and so i am just going to go through this briefly with today with you dasharath's a little bit of his history and then what happens to him and who's behind it gives you a little window into the ramayana so 
like I mentioned to you, the history is that King Dasharatha had waited for a long time and finally got Ramachandra. And he was so cute and so smart and so humble. All these qualities are described by Narada Muni to Valmiki. So he's such a person. And Ramayana describes his qualities, best of qualities you can ever look for. So Ramachandra in the palace performed amazing actions and pastimes, which was attractive to everybody. Imagine how happy his parents were. All the three wives of King Dasharath were head over heels in love with Rama. They loved Ramachandra more than their own son. Naturally, they will, because he's a supreme personality of God. There's something similar to what we see in Krishna Leela. All the Gopa, gopis, the elderly gopis, although they were sending their sons, gopas, with Krishna, each one of them was desiring in their heart to have Krishna as their son. And he satisfied them in that pastime of Brahma Vimohana Leela, where Brahma stole all the calves and all the gopas. Krishna immediately expanded himself into all the gopas and the calves. And for one whole year, nobody knew it. Every day they were coming to the forest, playing, going back and doing the same activities. But somebody knew something different. That was the gopis and the cows. His elderly gopis knew that they were having excessive affection for their sons when they come back from the forest and when they're going in the morning. They could feel that, you know, I have a lot of affection and they were showing it by hugging, embracing, kissing, feeding the child, their breast milk and all the time they were feeling something different. And even at one point of time, Balaram observes that the cows will come running down the hill with their tails up and come and lick their calves like nothing. They had newborn calves because it was one year. Although they had newborn calves, they were licking these elderly calves like nothing. And that's when Balaram asked, is there something happening here? How is this that these cows are showing so much greater affection than their newly born calves? They're showing affection to these calves. That's when Krishna explains that it's me. I have expanded myself. So these wives of Dasharat, they had great love for Ramachandra, especially Kaite. Kaite had openly made this statement to Dasharat and to everybody else. Ramachandra is my most dear son. He was born out of Kaushalya and Kaite's son was Bharata. But she said, he is my dearest son. I love him more than Bharata. And Bharata did not feel anything bad about it at all. And he said, I also like Ramachandra like that only. I don't mind that you love Ramachandra. Naturally, you should. He's so lovable. He's so lovable. So like everybody is in love with Ramachandra. The entire Ayodhya is in love with Ramachandra. You can understand what it means. One icon like that. It's not one of our so-called icons in the, you know, the film world or in the political world somewhere else. But this is like, he's the supreme absolute truth. Everybody is attracted. So Kaikai was so attracted to Ramachandra. And every day she was doting on him and speaking to him and many things were happening in the palace. But always there is somebody with whom some things are not happening. Even in Ayodhya, even in Lord Ramachandra's palace. That is the way this world is designed and that's the way the past times of the Lord are designed. So in the verse that we just read, King Dasharath was a, such a great warrior. He fought. He fought for all the demigods also because he was such a great warrior. Dasharatha. He can fight standing on the Ratha in 10 different directions simultaneously. He would just swing around and jump around and fight. And he was so good at it. And he had one, he had some special qualities. He could shoot by hearing the sound and with his eyes. Both equally good. 
he would shoot by sound so one of those days early he went to fight he went to hunt in the forest and it was raining cats and dogs and then he was trying to practice that in this rain with that type of sound at the background let me try if we can shoot some animal by sound so drenched in the forest on the chariot he heard like an elephant using its trunk from to drink water from the stream he heard this gurgling sound you know like it sucks up with his trunk and then he used his aim and then he shot and he's such a sharp shooter that the arrow went and hit that particular it doesn't have it was not an elephant it happened to be a human voice that screamed out and said who is this who has done this to me why i have been shot i did nothing wrong to anybody in this world all i am doing is serving my poor blind parents and some person finds it easy to do this to me how wrong are you and screamed what will my blind parents do now and he heard this and he shivered he stood completely rooted in shock what have i done so he got down from his chariot traced that wise line and went there to the stream and he found a beautiful young boy with the arrow on his chest and he was having a huge pitcher a big water container and he was having taking water from the stream to take for his father and mother in his hermitage and he has been shot so dashrath went there and stood in front of him drenching in the rain and he was so afraid that he has done some big mistake and he had done it when he saw that person the person said why have you done this and dashrath explained i'm a person like this i'm a hunter i'm a king i came to hunt i thought it was an elephant and i let go my arrow and never never knew that you know this what's going to happen and i'm extremely sorry about it i don't know what i can do so this boy says that's it i'm going to give up my life now you can please go and meet my parents with this picture of water i'm sorry you have to face them whatever you can do your king i understand that you have uh, you know shot me like this but whatever is the result of it you have to take it one thing you can do for me is to meet my parents and make some arrangement with them and tell them about this i'm sorry i can't accompany you he is a very dharmic person and he told him please pull out this arrow so that i can die and he said i don't want to be the person killing you you've already done it he said it's only a matter of time i will die matter you pull it out and let me die because it's so painful so he did that he went to that small hermitage and he was so afraid and so much down depressed what have i done what have i done and then he goes and sees those two people you know clinging to each other completely blind almost like it's mentioned like birds without a feather old birds without a feather very sorry and pathetic so he froze when he saw them in the dark in the light of the lamp and they were asking who is that why have you come so late today my dear son why did you take so long we are waiting for you we are thirsty we want a drink and he froze and he didn't speak and then they were asking him as he closed the door why don't you tell us something why don't you speak what happened did anything happen they were asking why are you silent and so you can imagine dashrath situation <laughs> he's so worried how will i tell them this is what i have done to your son i've killed him it was a very bad situation for him so he went ahead and he said my name is dashrath king dashrath i have come to the forest to hunt and he told them this what happened and they both heard but not a word not a sound 
but stream of tears flowing down their eyes. And the father with great difficulty spoke, O king, what have you done? But you have done it in ignorance. You did not do it with intention. What can we do? Look at our situation. Uh, what will we do now? Anyway, you must take us to our son. We want to touch him. We want to feel him and give him a proper cremation. So he carried both those old people in the rain and he took them into the All this he has to do alone. He's a king, but he's caught in a situation like this in the forest. He has no helper, no soldier, no army, no assistant, no squire, nothing with him. Sometimes in life we get stuck with situations and you have to perform many things yourself, although you have the facility for everything. He's the king of Ayodhya. And this is a forest in Ayodhya, but nobody's there with him. And he's stuck into this type of a blunder which he has done, and he has to do everything himself. He carried them. And he was shivering and shaking. My gosh, what have I done? And then he brought them to the bank of the river, Sarayu. And uh, they blind two people were crying and hugging their son and wailing and crying. He couldn't stand it. I am the reason for this. I am the cause of this suffering. Who are you? What type of a king are you? What a horrible personality you are. And they both didn't say anything against King Dasher. That made him feel even more. They were so quiet and, you know, hermit. And they gave a good cremation. And then finally, as the body of the sun was burning, they decided to enter the fire, both the parents. And that time, this father spoke. He said, my dear king, you may have done it out of ignorance, but I can do nothing but end my life because I don't have money. Who was our eyes? Who was our life? Who was everything for us? And therefore, you too, should suffer the same thing. You will be separated from your son. You will die out of separation. They'll say this and they'll go into the fire. Dasharath will speak this to Kaushalya after Ramachandra has left for the forest. This is There's many more history. He fought in the war and uh, once he took his wife, Kaikai, with him. So she is like the most beautiful of three of them. He's very attracted to her. He's his pet wife. He's every day visiting her in her palace, in her house. And everybody knows about it. And she's very smart, very intelligent, very talented, very, very beautiful looking. Completely enamored Dasharath. So the situation is such that we are fast forwarding. It's a coronation of Ramachandra. Many things are happening inside Dasharat's head and he's growing old. So he decides and has a meeting with the ministers and said, let's decide to make Ramachandra the king and everybody unanimously agreed. And so it was fixed. But something was wrong in the ceremony that Bharat and Shatrughna were not there. And uh, coronation is going to occur, but Bharat and Shatrugna are not there. They have gone to their maternal uncle's place in Ketaya. So in the palace, there is big celebration being started. And already Ramachandra and Sita are on fast. He's lying on grass mat for the night and he's fasting. He's getting ready for the next day for coronation. And he's going through all the... Uh, different type. Oh, uh, am I not being heard properly? Uh, is it okay? Well, this is the best we can do now. Let's see if we can do something tomorrow. So, uh, he did uh, all the necessary things for the ritual. And then finally, he was getting ready on that side. Vashishta was very busy arranging everything and so many things were happening. And then on 
other side, Kai Kai, Kaushalya and Sumitra are so highly pleased, happy. Everybody is happy. Whole of Ayodhya is celebrating it. Whole of Ayodhya is celebrating it. Right? And there is festivity and there is festoons and flags and every street is decorated. Animals are decorated. Everybody is happy. It's mentioned in the Ramayana that even the animals were dancing. The elephants, the horses, the cows, everybody were dancing. Whole of Ayodhya was celebrating because Ramachandra is going to be coronated king. And Dashrath personally calls Ramachandra and said, I'm going to you know, make you king tomorrow. And whatever Dashrath says, Ramachandra will accept. And it's mentioned he was not the least bit proud. He was very meditative, doing all the karmas correctly, all the rituals correctly, and very humble. And everybody loved his behavior so much. So this is going on. And then Mantara, a very aged hunchback, Pubja means hunchback. She goes to the roof of the palace. And the roof of the palace, she looks down and sees, wow, big festivities. So many people are celebrating. What is happening? So she asks, one of the nurses who's looking after Ramachandra, She's there with the yellow dress and very happy. And she's also part of the celebration. She's also looking from the rooftop. And so she asks him, what's going on? You don't know? Ramachandra is getting coronated tomorrow. He's becoming the king. Dashrath is going to make him the king. Immediately she becomes very angry. And she takes her sticks and rushes down with anger. She climbs down, comes into Kaike's place. And then Kaike is actually resting in happiness. She's going to rest. And she goes and shakes her feet very rudely and wake up, you foolish lady. She tells, wake up, you foolish lady. Mude is mentioned. Wake up, you foolish lady. What are you sleeping? Is this the time to sleep? And she gets up with a jerk and says, what? What's wrong with you? What do you want? And she's, of course, very respectful because Mantara is like a very, very old acquaintance in the palace. And it's like the personal servant. So she has a right of certain types of... Uh, she's privileges. She's privileged in certain ways. And then starts a conversation with Kaike. I said, you are foolish. You're sleeping. This is not a time to sleep. This is the time to be awake. And this is the time to see the atrocity being done on you. Do you know? She said, what? What atrocity is going on? Do you know that there is a big plot and conspiracy against you? Ramachandra is going to become the king. It should actually be your son, Bharata, who should become the king. It's because Kaushalya is working against you. And that king Dasharat, he is a snake. He's the one who has done this. Completely different. But anybody in Ayodhya is heard. Is being heard only by Kaikai from Mantra. So she comes out like nothing. And she hears all these things and said, my dear Mantra, thank you very much for bringing me this good news that Ramachandra is going to be coronated. Here is my necklace for you, she says. In the, she can't listen. She just can't agree with it at all. The Ramachandra is my dear son. And I love him. He should be the king. It's nine o'clock. There's no doubt about it. So uh, she gives a necklace and immediately Mantra throws that necklace. It scatters all over the place, a diamond necklace. And says, you fool, this is not the time to give me a necklace. Do you understand what I'm telling you? You are going to become a servant maid of Kaushalya. Once Ramachandra becomes the king, Dashrath will retire and then the Kaushalya will become very powerful and you will be and your son will become a pune. And she starts talking all sorts of things. And Kaikai is not able to digest it. And then she uses all every type of trick and every type of venom she pours in. You know, it's a saying that if you keep speaking to somebody 
against their belief. And if you repeatedly do it, at some point of time, it will crack the faith and you'll be able to make an entry. But the question that many people ask when they read Ramayana is, out of the whole of Ayodhya, why is only one person like this? For what reason? She hates Kausalya. Mantra's character, she hates Kausalya. She hates King Dasharat. She hates Ramachandra. What a character. And then the reason is, all the devas, all the demigods, it seems, met together and said, Ramachandra should not get coronated. If Ramachandra gets coronated, becomes a king, he'll settle down in the palace. If he settles down in the palace, then who will do something to Ravana? Our mission, we pray to the Supreme Lord to come because of Ravana. So if he gets coronated, it will not happen. So what we should do is to send him to the forest. So it seems Saraswati appeared into Mantara and through her intelligence convinced her into her tongue. She was having Saraswati Kataksham at that point when she was speaking to Kaikai. Kai. She was speaking so good and so convincing she was that Kaikai Kai slowly succumbed. At one point of time, Kaikai said, now I see it. I was not able to see it before. She kept on saying, and for every argument that Kaikai put up, she broke it down and proved to Kaikai that you are a fool. Don't sleep. Wake up. And at that time, Kaikai somehow got completely converted to understanding. It seems Ramayana started jumping and dancing. Mantra, you are my best advisor. How did I not recognize it? It seems she jumped and danced. You can't believe it. This transformation from one place to the other. Mantra had that ability because all the devas and their shakti was behind mantra and Saraswati was helping mantra and uh, pu pushing her across. And Kaitai got convinced. Then she started describing the beauty of mantra. It was very interesting in the Ramayana says, Kaikai, what a wonderful figure you have got. You look so beautiful. Your breasts are like this. Your buttocks are like this. Your hips are like this. Your thighs are so wonderful. You are that. You are this. Can you imagine? Kaikai is speaking over the hunchback. He looks very ugly. She praises her. It's amazing what has happened to Kaikai. Right? And then Kaikai is asking Mantra, so what should I do? Tell me what should I do? And then Mantra said, now listen to me. Then she reminds Kaikai about the boon. When he was fighting and he went, when she went with Dashar to fight and then the great demon Shambhara was being fought by the demigods and he fought him. He got hit and he got wounded. He was almost dying and Kaikai personally lifted him up set his wounds right and gave him life almost. And after Dashrath comes back to consciousness, he hears everything from Kaikai and he's so grateful to her. He said, ask me any boon you want. Two boons I'll give you right now. She says, no, I don't want anything now. I'll ask it in due course of time. And she forgot about it. But she mentioned this to Mantra long back. And Mantra reminds her now and tells her, you remember these two boons Dashrath has given the best thing you should do is, number one, you should ask him to send Ramachandra to the forest for 14 years. Number two, make Bharata the king. He should be coordinated. And don't compromise on this. And you should do it like this. You should go to the Krodha Agaram. That is like Kopashala, we say. You go into the place where you can enter and become angry and lie on the floor, wear these simple cloth, lie on the floor, scatter all your jewels and just put on an act and don't give him. She gives total training to him how to catch hold of Dashar and how to ask him of this. And that's it. She does it. And Dasharat is so busy and excited. But the real thing behind here is Dasharat and Kaikai know something 
which maybe even Mantara does not know. Or maybe Kaikai does not know which Dasharat knows. This is a promise made by Dasharat to Kaikai's father when he married her because he was in love with her. He said that I am marrying because I don't have a son from both my other wives. And the father of Kaikai said, even in the future, if you get sons from your other wives, you must promise me that my daughter Kaikai's son will be the king. And he said yes to that. But he didn't speak about it to anybody. And Mantara told Kaikai, why has he sent Bharata and Shatrugna away? And when they're away, he's having a coronation. Because he has promised your father that he'll make Bharata the king. And he's trying to avoid it. And so Kaike became very convinced. Yes, true. He's doing it. So that's how she convinced Kaike. So Kaike was also very determined. She completely changed. She now looked on Dashrath as an enemy. She lay down there. And when King Dashrath came, Dashrath came and he said, came to her palace. He said, where is she? Normally she stands for me here, welcomes me, embraces me, and then we get into the uh, you know, palace and we have talks and intimately we have association and everything. And so she looked and asked one of those women who was assisting there, a very servicing, she said, my dear king, she is in the Krodha Ghar. She is in the place of anger. Why? Because something is wrong. And so he rushed inside. Kaikai, what happened? And he came inside and he saw her on the floor. He was, boom, he was very, very taken up. Because it's Kaikai, his favorite wife. And he wanted to come and spend with her the night about Ramachandra's coronation tomorrow. And he had already spoken to her and Kaikai expressed, wonderful, let Ramachandra get coronated. It's already happened. And so here, there comes another amazing event. She will ask her, what happened? He will stroke her face or put her on her lap and, you know, he'll ask, did anybody do anything? Are you very sick? I can get the best medication. Did somebody say anything wrong to you? Tell me, I'll punish him. Tell me what happened. I can get anything done for you. And then slowly she will open up. Very strategically, Kaite will do it. Fully as per the advice of Mantra. She will actually tell from, uh, Dashrath, my dear king, I have something to ask you as a favor. Will you do it for me? She'll act in that tone, you know, very nicely put tone. Serious and very sad and very pained like that. And you say, of course, tell me what it is you want done. Are you sure you'll do what I ask you to do? Of course I will do. You should keep up your word. Why are you talking to me like this? I've always done everything that you wanted me to do. She makes sure, my, my dear husband, this is not an ordinary thing. If you say yes, you have to do it. Later you should not. She makes sure all those things. Then she says, you remember you gave me bones. And then just says, yeah, what? Tell me, what do you want? I ask of you that you send Ramachandra to the forest and put Bharata as a king. And he's so shocked. He said, what happened to you? Are you, what's something wrong with you? It's not my kaikai or my mother. You can't accept it. Uh, it's described so beautifully in the Ramayana, the conversation. This conversation is so varied and deep. And Kaikai goes ahead and presses forward. Because Mantra has told her, never give up. And she does everything that Mantra says, ruthlessly. She will tell Dashrath and Dashrath will fall down and say, please Kaikai, what are you telling me? It's Rama, my son, our son. How can I live without him? Ask me anything else I'll give you. I'll give you my life if you want. He says, no, you told me you'll keep up your word. And then there's a conversation, so amazing conversation. Finally, he is almost unconscious. He comes back to consciousness, goes back. He's not able to take it. And then she will say, call Ramachandra and tell him now. And the scene will happen. But 
Let's get back to this before we go there. The point here that take home today is the association of certain type of people can actually kill your bhakti. Association is so important, and this scene from the Ramayana is repeatedly commented upon in terms of association. Actually, it is mentioned Kaike could have stopped Mantra beyond a certain extent. That's when she gave the necklace and she threw the necklace. She said, "Enough is enough. Get out of here. I don't want to hear you anymore." Ramachandra, I love him. He's my son, and Dashrath has not done anything wrong, and Kaushalya is very dear to me. Get out, out. She could have done it. She didn't do it. At that point, she didn't do it. When we know that somebody is invading our privacy, invading our deep faith in God, in society of devotees, in their in our understanding of the truth, and trying to meddle around with our private faith, then you must be very, very careful. Very careful. And you must immediately get rid of them, mercilessly get rid of them. In Bhagavad, it says that when you hear somebody speaking something that is difficult for you to listen to, it's against your principles, especially in devotion. It's against Krishna, against devotees, and many such things. Immediately, you can do three things. You should catch hold of that person, put his tongue out, and cut it. It's mentioned. You should pull his tongue out and cut it. If you cannot do that, you should immediately run away from that place. Not you should never hear it. Otherwise, you should be able to do tarka and defeat him in argument and prove the other thing. Right. So most people choose either the violent form, sama veda dana danda type of thing it is, or they just leave the place. Right. Very rarely people are able to argue with such, with such type of people. Asat sanga tyaga e Vaishnava achar. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was asked, what is the most important thing that a devotee should do? He said, give up asat sanga, give up association of non-devotees, and you should do that ruthlessly. If you have all these pet peeves and pet attachments somewhere deep down inside. We show this nice liking towards somebody, although you know he's sometimes speaking totally things against this, that, and all that. But still, you know, I know him. It's okay, fine. But you should know how to not take their association, but still be friendly with them. The art of association is that you don't sell yourself, don't allow them to in invade your consciousness, but you can still be friendly. In other words, you can't be too intimately friendly. The nectar of instruction describes that very nicely. Some of you would have read that if you have done Bhakti Shastri or if you have read Prabhupada's nectar of instruction. Yadati pratigrithanati dukhyam akyati prachati bhunke bhojayate chaiva sad vidha priti lakshanam. Priti. Loving relationships means these six things. Exchanging gifts, eating food with one another, and then speaking intimately, words of the heart, confidential things, right? Like these six things are mentioned. You should not do this with non-devotees. These things you should not do with non-devotees. You should only Keep a distance. In the Panchatantra, there is the story of the crocodile and the monkey. All of you know that. When the crocodile was told by the, when the monkey was told by the crocodile that my wife is sick and if she needs a monkey's heart, I could think of only you. I'm sure you would like to give you a heart because I'm such a good friend of yours. The monkey said, Oh my gosh, why didn't you tell me? I left my heart in the tree. It was very smart. And the crocodile went and said, Yeah, please get it back and he jumped into the tree and said, Tata, by the I'll see you later. So that is the meaning of a devotee. When it comes to me giving my heart to you, Tata Bhai Bhai, I'm not going to give my heart to you. Right? My heart is meant for devotees, for Krishna, for such relationships. Krishna is descended for that. Mantra could have done 
I mean, Kaike could have done that to Mantra, but she did not at one point of time. She went ahead and entertained it, and, and then she got into the trap. And she became an instrument for the demigods and for Mantra to do this. And she sent her own beloved Rama to the forest. See how much people can change 180 degrees because of association. And later, Kaike herself was wondering, how did I do that? She was repenting later. She met with Ramachandra in the forest. And Ramachandra told her, you don't have to worry. You're an instrument for certain things to unfold. But then forever this is tagged along with Kaike. So we have to be very careful with whom we associate with in this world. Even in the material world, people keep away from certain types of association. It disturbs me. It spoils my whole mentality and mood. So our takeaway today in this brief introductory session is from this Leela of the association that she took from Mantra and allowed Mantra to enter her whole consciousness and adjust it there. That's too much. We should not allow certain people to enter inside our domain so much. But we can allow pure devotees of the Lord to enter because they will help us in resetting our Krishna consciousness, in eliminating certain things which are not required for you. They will always do good for you. But if you have association wrongly, many things can happen which are very, very bad for your spiritual life and for your progress. Even in human society, this is for devotees, even in human society, even according to moral ethical principles, it's always good to have association of people who are at least morally, ethically fixed in some way, a little religious, and they have some do's and don'ts. It's not bad because today morality and ethics is being challenged. Everything is being relativized. So what? This is good for you. This is good for you. I like this. You don't like that. It doesn't matter. I respect everybody's likes, whether it is right or wrong. And they must expect, I respect my likes and dislikes, whether there is some morality scale by on which you should bounce it or not. There's nothing like that. We should support each other. We should all, you know, be happy with whatever each one of us likes and does not like. This type of moral relativism, this type of a Plato of sins, very dangerous for human society. And because of that, you can see what's happening. We allow people to enter in all domains uh, of our personal lives. Our personal lives are personal. They are meant to be measured against the instructions given in the scriptures, measured against the instruction of the Acharya, Guru, Vaishnavas, and devotees, and everything. If you have a particular standard, then we know where to draw a line in our association. And sometimes people find it very painful to do that because they've got into Krishna consciousness and this understanding. They feel difficult to give up their old company and everything, and they wobble between this and that. And they find it, they're finding it difficult to become seriously dedicated to a spiritual discipline. Right? But you have to draw a line and take a decision. No, this is not good for me. In this lifetime, I would like to do this and be a perfect gentleman and make progress. And therefore, I don't like this bit. So I'm not going to do it, whoever it may be. So similarly, you can see other devotees, they drew a line. They drew a line. I'm not going to. You can see Bharata when he comes back, he made a decision. He made a decision that you have done something. You may be my mother, but you have definitely done something that's totally wrong against me, against my principles, against morality, against religion, against scripture, against Ramachandra, against my father, against the whole dynasty. I reject you. You're not my mother. The opposite thing happens with Bharata. Not the way Kaikai deals with Mantara, but Bharata deals with everything in a brilliant way. And Bharata suffers a lot because everybody looks at him as that person who has intrigued with his mother to take over the throne. And everybody says that, including even Lakshmana, Guhan, everybody, all the old Ayodhya citizens were thinking like that about him. But he simply stuck on to the right thing. He rejected and then slowly everybody understood this person is very deep. He is following the right thing. 
they got away from the wrong association of kaitai i'm not associating with you i'm not taking your idea your plan is not acceptable to me it's wrong they it threw it out of the window and now what will kaitai do with it because everything depends on bharata and when bharata came back this is what he did because he knew what to do i want ramachandra not you i i don't mind giving you up but i want to get back ramachandra he went to see him in the forest he just said to hell with you so these two instances tells us disciplining ourselves in association you know where to draw the line and where not to draw the line be there and so all comes very smoothly inside it comes disguised as your most wanted person because mantra is the advisor to kaitai throughout she is a old intelligence in the house so you can imagine how it would be so uh lot chetani advises that you should ruthlessly cut off materialistic association otherwise it will kill your real spiritual life okay so today is a short session an introductory session i'll end here uh, i'm not going to take any comments or questions today because uh, i'm just faced with some other requirement but i can maybe if you want anybody can have one question or a comment but from tomorrow onwards will be more streamlined and somebody has complained here that there is echo the audio is very poor is it so and somebody else has said no i can hear it perfectly some people are not able to hear and some people are able to hear we'll try to set that right with our technical team it was okay just now i gave another session uh, and we'll meet again tomorrow and we will study this a little further there is a question from narendra prasad how to control the mind while it's wandering and focus on to krishna okay it's not really easy narendra prasad it is a problem of everybody arjuna recognized it as a problem he said that chanchalam chanchalahi mana krishna pramathi phalavadritam tasyaham nigraham manye vayuri vasudishkaram it is definitely difficult to control the mind is like the wind trying to control the wind and krishna advises that you must go on practice mode abhyasa yenitu konte ya vairagyena cha grihyate so we need to practice and the mind is one of the most challenging aspects of our whole self and structure and uh, prabhupada told us that by chanting krishna's names the mind can be very nicely controlled he said if you chant loudly if you focus and if you chant gradually the mind will be brought under control imperceptibly it happens it of course doesn't happen overnight and it's not so easy we are situated inside this material body and part of our subtle body is the mind which is the most powerful faculty we have so unless we are spiritually awakened we can't control the lower aspects of this contraction indriyani praniyahu indriyebhya parammanah manasastu parabuddhi yo buddhe paratastu saha that the senses grossly and then the mind more subtle than subtler than the mind intelligence and then subtle so them all is a spirit soul by chanting krishna's name by observing a spiritual discipline associating with devotees and talking to people who are interested in these matters gradually you're bringing up the spiritual dimension you're waking up spiritually when you wake up spiritually you can take charge you can actually take charge of your subtle body your gross body and become the programmer you can reprogram that is the exact theory given by krishna in bhagavad gita and that's what arjuna does he gets inspired and he does that every one of us should be keen to control the mind like you rightly said here and to do that we should know we should awaken spiritually 
So therefore, we should chant Krishna's name, we should read Bhagavad Gita, we should read the Bhagavad Gita, we should be in the company of, discuss, be in the company of discuss discuss these, devotees and discuss these uh, aspects of devotional service. Discuss the Bhagavad, discuss the Bhagavad Gita, like we're discussing now, the Ramayana, in the light of association. Uh, so when we take these precautions, it becomes increasingly easy to control the mind. I was just explaining that in the, in in the, the session, session. Uh, it's like you do these experiments in physics and in chemistry and whatever, in your school, in your college, you control certain factors, you control the temperature, at constant temperature, this will happen. At constant pressure, this will happen. At this particular, this thing will happen. So when we control these things in discipline, then bhakti rises. And you become more spiritually elevated. And at that time, you can look down on the mind and its pranks. You, you won't think the mind is very big. You become bigger than your mind. On the mind, say, hey, shut up. It's easy for such a person. When we see great personalities like Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, we can see in his actions and the way he did things how he was very fixed. He never allowed anything else to cross through his mind. He's a highly controlled devotee. And when you see a lot of devotees, Especially, they have also honed to perfection many of these things to a great extent. So it is possible that you can practice control by chanting Krishna's names and having association and performing bhakti yoga with seriousness. And it takes a little time. Don't become morose very fast. Don't give up. It will definitely happen. Because Krishna is guaranteed. Kaunteya pratijanahi name bhakta pranashyati. My devotee will never be a failure, especially in devotional service. He will always be successful. Okay? So, Narendra Prasad, I hope that helps you. Om Tat Sat. Uh, okay. Maharaj, there won't be any video for you. Uh, don't you see my video? No, I didn't see at all. Well, I think others are seeing. And the video is perfectly on, Maharaj. There's no problem in the video. Maybe in then the instrument. I'm, then I think I'm doing something wrong that I didn't see in the whole session. Yeah, yeah we. I mean, you can. I mean, we, we will speak to you once the session is over. We'll speak to you to start it out. <laughs>